is Pat Crowley from Salt Lake City, Utah. My company is Chapool, and I'm asking $50,000 in exchange for 5% equity of our company. At Chapool, we're changing the way people think about food, and we do it with an energy bar. But what separates us from the thousands of competitors isn't the delicious medjool dates or the organic dark chocolate. No, it's our sustainable, eco-friendly form of protein that goes into every single bar. I'll show you, but first a joke. <laughs> Why are frogs so happy? Uh -oh. Why? Why? Because they eat what bugs them. And now so <laughs> can you with your pool cricket bars. Oh, you gotta be kidding. Crickets are an extremely sustainable form of protein. They go into each one of our bars. Oh. Insects are eaten in over half the countries around the globe, and we think it's about time that Americans catch up with the rest of the world. There is no way I'm eating that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a Thailand-themed coconut ginger lime. This one? Yep. Aztec bar is dark chocolate coffee cayenne. And then we have an all-American peanut butter and chocolate. Why not, right? They're crickets, not cockroaches. <laughs> Correct. We actually make a flower out of the crickets, so you won't see any legs or antenna. <laughs> you first. Must we eat it? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> You're obviously jumping at the opportunity here to get on board with a growing global business. So, who wants to join Chapool and help us to feed the revolution? So, we just did this pitch uh, yesterday, I think it was, uh, on Chirp, right? The It's the same uh, cricket powder made, uh, but it made into chips instead of uh, into a, a protein bar. Uh, this is from season five. So this is uh, like three seasons earlier. So the Chirps was on season eight. But uh, I, it's just funny that he, he comes out and says, eat what bugs you. And I believe one of the Chirps ladies, uh, Rose or Laura, had uh, the eat what bugs you uh, shirt on during their pitch. So just uh, funny, funny use of, uh, of language there. But I, you know, I... As we talked about in the in the other video, and I'll link that at the at the end, uh, probably up here. I am on board with this idea of changing the the conversation, especially when it talks about sustainability and how like it takes you know you can make one pound of flour of, of protein flour from crickets, and it takes one gallon of water versus uh, one pound of beef caught is like twenty gallons of water or something like that. I mean that's a, it's just ex, it's astronomical uh the amount of water that goes into you you know to to making that protein happen so those are the kind of conversations that i think are really important going forward and uh as was pointed out in the comments by fast break 08 uh the conversation needs to go to like the younger generation and, and get things going there so that we can eventually get it to to be part of the norm rather than part of the exception uh with that said Part of the exception of looking great in your super hoodies, super entrepreneur hats, uh, getting all your ABCs over at shopsuperjoe.com. That's apparel, books, and courses. Again, go over to shopsuperjoe.com to help support this channel. Very much appreciated. You realize that there's a huge barrier Absolutely. around this product. Absolutely. Some very large percentage of consumers are going to be revolted because in our North American society, they don't eat insects. I'm not saying it's good or bad, they just don't. I agree. So what I'm trying to determine, because I'm trying to be pragmatic, I'm happy to invest in it if I can make money. Sure, so we modeled our energy bar after the sushi industry. 30 years ago, eating raw fish was completely repulsive to Americans. And until a man by the name of Ichiro Mashita craftily developed the California rule, and it was a gentle introduction. And so that's what we're doing with our energy. That took 20 years. Well, yeah, I, that's I'd like the example though of how how are we going to make this happen? And you could see let the chirps, you know, made the the same like same in in you know path right of let, how do we get people into this idea of eating something that you would normally never want to eat? And in this case, it's you know it's crickets. So having that having that protein bar like. It's high in protein, go straight for the people that want high protein, that want a travel size bar to help them, you know, get through the day or go on their hike or whatever and and just kind of slowly ease people into it. And yes, Mr. Wonderful is right. It took 20 30 years, uh 20 plus years to get people into the idea of eating raw uh you know, raw seafood, 
raw fish. I personally like sushi um, probably more than I should. But, uh, it, you know, easing people into this into this idea. Um, but the thing is, is once you've you, – like the seeds have already been planted, right? So, yeah, sushi isn't the same thing. And I'm not going to say oh, one is like going to necessarily make a difference to the other. But – I feel like we're in a different place than we were 20, 30 years ago, uh, especially, I mean, this came out, uh, I don't know, what was it, 2014 or, or tw something to that effect, but we're, we're just, we're in a different place than we were, uh, you, you know, now, and even then, uh, back in 2014, where people have already gone through those changes, right? They've become more culturally acceptive to, or receptive and uh, ux, uh, ux accepted, <laughs> Uh, to to these other kind of food options, and I feel like it's already it, it it gets in people's minds. So he's not. I don't think he's far off there. Talk, talk about sales. Okay, so we to date we have uh, fifty thousand dollars in sales, and this year we're averaging thirty three percent increase month over month revenue. So Ooh. over what period of time did you sell fifty thousand? That's in just under a year. Where are you in retail? Okay. Natural food stores, bike shops. Uh, rock climbing gyms, CrossFit gyms. You're saying it's worth a million dollars? Absolutely. But why can't I just get my own crickets and make my own bars? <laughs> we, we've spent a lot of time developing the supply chain and working with the FDA, and we're the only ones right now with an insect-based nutritional product on the market. Only one that can sell cricket bars? We're the only ones doing it. The one bar, what do you sell? Two ninety nine. And to make it? It costs about a dollar. Where do you get your crickets? Do you grow them yourself? You catch them? We work. We work with a cricket ranch, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, okay. So uh, you know the profit margins is okay. I mean, at a dollar, you're selling them. What, what are you gonna sell them for? A dollar fifty. So you're making uh, fifty cents there, and then they're, you're gonna sell it retail at two ninety nine. I mean, hopefully at that point you're selling a lot of them through your own website and and just direct to consumer marketing. So you're picking up that profit margin there. I I think that that's super competitive though, because like I'm trying to think of the price of like a Cliff Bar. I, I, for some reason I I'm I'm thinking it's like in the four dollar like four dollar range. Like especially if you go to like a like a Wawa or a convenience store and and pick one up. It's not it's not super cheap. They have little lassos, <laughs> cricket brands. Where is their cricket brand? <laughs> they, we've been raising crickets in the in the United States for over 100 years. It was based on Why? fishing bait. Then it was reptile feed. Yep. And now that was one of the reasons we chose it, crickets is because the infrastructure is already in place to grow them at a large scale. Are cricket farms enclosed? They are. And that, that's one of the environmental benefits is that you can grow them in a warehouse and it's significantly fewer acres to grow more protein. I'm interested in how they meet their end. You put them in a blender and they stay to the sides <laughs> and they fall down and get fried. What happens? We freeze them. That's about the best way to go. So it's it actually their natural metabolism just slows down. <laughs> Pat, what is that, this? That sounds really um. That sounds really nice, actually. Like freezing them, then they're not putting up a fight. Then they're not. You're not trying to like jam them into the blender. I, 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 I like that. Place. Like, do I eat this and it's half the size of a normal bar? A bar with other all natural and organic ingredients right. would have half the protein that that does. So you grind your crickets up into flour. Our name Chapul is actually an Aztec word for cricket because they would do the same thing. They would gather crickets, blend them up into a flour and make a protein dense bread. Look, I gotta tell you, I'm a, I'm a pretty brave guy, but snakes, bugs brave freak enough, me huh? right out. <laughs> so there's no way I'm eating this stuff. Thank you, I'm out. That's a let's, that's a, that's a shame because I I feel like there's you're not you're not asking somebody to eat like um what's the the cho like chocolate covered crickets or something like that where it's like oh the cricket is all here and you're eating the or cho chocolate covered grasshoppers one one of those types of bugs that people tend to eat uh chocolate covered. Let's talk about the crickets because you didn't tell the whole cricket story. The truth about crickets are that they are considered a very important insect in many countries around the world. Absolutely. They're considered lucky. Absolutely. For example, in China, people think it's incredibly unlucky to kill one, even accidentally. How do you know that? Listen, I'm Mr. <laughs> Wonderful. I know everything. It's considered really bad karma to kill them, let alone freeze them. You've got a whole bunch of crickets right here. They're not chirping because they sense danger. 
I That's agree. what they said. I agree. You're near, they know they're going to die a horrible death with you. I just think in this case, those crickets are telling me to stay out of this deal. I'm out. I have to hand it to you. I ate that and it tastes great. I can't tell the difference, and I'm relieved to find out that that crunch that's on my tongue are not the legs of the crickets and all that kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> I think it's going to be a heck of a long journey uh, to convince people that they're going to love to bite into something with crickets in it. I just think it is. And whenever there's a long journey in a business, it means it costs you more money to get there. I'm out. That's, that's a shame. You know, with Barbara's background and picking up on foods and things uh, would definitely be great to add to that and she she lives a pretty active lifestyle uh overall so having the opportunity to have somebody that's like ah you know i i really love this and uh and could wrap that into her other food uh ventures I, I, it's kind of a kind of a shame she's out we, we've been very concerted in our growth right now we've been intentionally trying to fly under the radar to some degree Un unsuccessfully we've been in national international publications because of this i can't wrap my head around this I spend most of my life trying to get away from bugs. Uh, not even. So I'm sorry. I'm out. With all the connections, all the connections that Damon has in the uh, CrossFit world and gym world, workout world, that that's mm, that stinks to have him out. All right, let's Me do this, you. Mark. Let's do this. Okay, Jiminy. <laughs> <laughs> With the work you've done to create cricket flour, you're basically saying there's no competition at all? There's a couple of up-and-coming companies. What are they doing compared to you guys? What are they using for flour? They don't have a product yet. They've asked us to sell to them. And we're we're debating right now whether we should actually do that. And why what's the debate? Our business model is not to invest in infrastructure. And so I'd prefer to purchase the flower at some point if I could and just be the brand behind Wait, the insect movement. I th my understanding was you own the flower, right? We that do. you created we it. Do. You're, yeah. No one else has this flower but you. Correct. From an FDA perspective, right. you're the only one that's approved. Correct. Right? So why not have go to these other guys and say, okay, we'll sell you our flower at you know three times what it costs us to make, but you have to brand it made with Chapul flour. That's what. That's why I say we're we're on the fence, and that's what we're going to do if we decide to sell the. Why flower. wouldn't you do that? Well, that's a good thing. I mean, but that that's not always the necessarily the easiest thing to to do, right? It's easy to to say, oh, well, you have to, you know, part of our agreement is you have to to brand it with our stuff, but that doesn't that doesn't always you know work out. I mean, especially because nobody. Nobody knows the Chipotle name at that point, right? They don't have the brand recognition of like, oh, I'm buying a, 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 a different bar and it has Splenda in it, right? Like, and, and Splenda's the name that like people recognize or it comes with Sweet and Low or it, it's it's made with real Oreo cookies, you know, that kind of thing. It, they, they don't have that brand recognition. And I could see, if especially if they're a bigger company that's like, getting involved with this them saying yeah no we're not we're not doing that so uh yeah we're not help we're not helping you gain market share uh market mine to to go and undercut us later after the fact that it's a great idea i gotta tell you the longer you're talking the more i realize you you have a great business but the business is the flower the business is not the energy bar Come on back in. We do have a lot of people saying, when are you going to sell the flower? When are you going to sell the flower? Right. One reason I've held off on doing that is that I'm my passion is the sustainability of our food systems. I love the fact that you're exclusive. You have no competition. I mean, yeah, it's great. I'd like to be able to help you, but it's not worth my time for 5%. I, I'd be happy to take more money. I could do that for you if you want. Oh, breath. really? <laughs> that is so generous of you, but it doesn't work for me. Okay. Right? Sell me. Yeah, okay. So we're projecting $150,000 of sales. I'm, I'm, we're past that. Okay. Right? We're negotiating. Uh, like I'm saying, we are at the brink. We're, uh, I we're got on that. the whole. We're negotiating. He's past all that. He we're wants negotiating. To know. Now, now it's numbers. We're talk. negotiating. All right. all right. You want me to come back with another offer? Yeah. You got to make it cricket sweet for him. Make me an offer. All right. So oh, before hold on, before he jumps in to that, I've run into that issue before too, where you know people talk in different vernacular, different words, different terms. 
that sometimes like I'm not, and then I feel like, oh, am I am I the dummy, or is it just you know they come from a different background, a different uh, niche, or a different uh, industry, or or something that like, or am I just not, am I just not like hip to the speak, right, uh, to, so to say. I can't believe I just said that. Um, <laughs> it's it's one of those things where you know if if you're if you're in his situation, if you're if you're in Pat's situation, you're you know you have all these these numbers and like that's where you're you know you're expecting to go right. But you know, for Mark could have just said, yeah, like, but make me a be- make me a better offer, make me an offer I can't refuse, not sell me further on the the concept and the the numbers and and all that going forward make me an offer all right so i i know what it takes to lead a team and i need to maintain complete ownership so i need to maintain 51 percent to lead the team that okay I so have. you have other investors not investors but uh employees the founders Found, that have equity that have okay, i have 80 so percent you have 80 percent i have 80 percent right so Let's do 10%. Make me an offer. This is going to be a hundred million dollar business in the next five years. With any luck at all, you might show a profit before you're dead. 15% I could do, Mark. Are you nuts? Pat, I'll give you the 50,000 for 20%. So we jump back in. Mark taking too long on the on the on the deal here. I'll do it for the fifteen percent. Fifteen percent? Yep. Let's go make some chirping money. Let's do it, Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> that one for me. Let's eat some crickets. Yeah, Good job, Robert. Crickets. Good job, man. Thank you very much. Robert, here's your constellation prize. Oh, don't come back. Oh, <laughs> I definitely gave away more equity than I wanted, but now that Mark is one of our partners, we can't be more excited to just take this to the next level and really feed the revolution. You cost me 5%. I'm not going to let you live that down. I'm going to get that back. You're trying to get 20 out of them? Yeah. Yeah, but Robert ruined that for you. Oh, they are so ugly. <laughs> oh, geez, yes. Uh, anyway... Pat, I would love to have you come here uh, on the channel, give an interview, talk about your Shark Tank experience, how things have been going since. Uh, clean and delicious protein powder. So it's been featured in a bunch of different places. They are selling the powder directly. I guess uh, – oh, okay. Do they still have the bar? It looks like they might still have the bar, or maybe they're just using the bar as example – uh because it looks like they are really just selling the 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 uh flour here at this point uh with some cricket based seasonings that is pretty pretty cool so yeah i guess i guess they decided that that was where the business was going to be uh taken to and and that's the direction that they went which is great good to see just like it's good to see comments like Leela Shams, who was on Shark Tank just like two weeks ago uh, with her TA3 bathing suit line saying down in the comments, I've never seen someone get my business so well, especially a man. Uh, he's borderline psychic. I appreciate you, Leela. Thank you so much. If you haven't checked out her interview, you should totally do that. Maybe I'll link uh, that down here as well as uh, the chirps. Uh, pitch on Shark Tank Season 8. I hope you have an amazing day. Take care and go be super.